My name's Graham Miller. I'm a photographer based in Fremantle. I'm here in Kalgoorlie as part of Playing the Man, which is playing at the Goldfields Art Centre. Playing the Man is an exhibition where I imitate 1970s and 80s football players from trading cards from my childhood. The project happened almost by accident. Some friends of mine asked me to join them for Movember and I thought there's just no way. I'd never grown a moustache in my life. I didn't think I was capable of growing moustache, but they hounded me and I eventually relented. And so I attempted to grow my first moustache at the age of 50. Terrible moustache, um, but I thought, well, I've got to keep going. And we were in Melbourne on a footy trip and we started talking about 1970s and 80s footy players and how they had incredible mows and bad hair. And I thought back to the Scanlans football trading cards that we used to have when we were kids. And I thought, there's something in here. This could be a vehicle to talk about a whole range of issues from my childhood. I arrived in Australia in 1977. My mother is Hong Kong Chinese. My father is from Mudgee, New South Wales. And as was the way in those days, um, expats just shipped their kids off to boarding school at a very young age. So in 77, I arrived in Australia a small, English-accented, half-Chinese boy. I mean, at the time, the, Australia had just come out of the White Australia policy, and that was really an anti-Asian immigration policy. And there were um, refugees flooding out of Vietnam, post-Vietnam War, and entering Australia. Some people weren't happy about that, so there was some anti-Asian sentiment. So I was vulnerable and isolated when I arrived. I remember the first day that I arrived and that the TV room was just jam-packed with country kids waiting for mark of the day, play of the day, goal of the day. And I realised at that moment that, you know, sport is very important in Australia and it's very important amongst this blokey culture of the boarding house. If I wanted to kind of assimilate, I would need to either play sport or be at least able to talk about it. I mean, I knew nothing about football, nothing at all. My first experience of football in the flesh was when I went to a waffle game in 78. I remember I was absolutely shocked. I walked in the ground, it was heavy drinking, there was um, physical biffo on the ground and in the stands. It was, it was frightening really and I thought I never want to play this game. But I saw on the field one player that looked remotely like me and that was Les Fong. And Les Fong was a player of Chinese heritage a brilliant football player. He, he captained uh, West Perth for many years. And he was well respected in the community, you know, for his leadership, for his footy prowess. And he was just a general great guy. And, and he'd built up all this social capital within the community. I mean, I don't know anyone who didn't like Les Fong. So when I was in the boarding house and I would be called names for being Chinese, I could always point to Les Fong. Because even though he was Chinese, they respected him and they liked him. And in some small way, all that social capital filtered down into my little world in the boarding house and I think it really helped me. So I'm grateful to Les for that. What started as a sort of a, a really humorous, fun project, I realised that underpinning it all, there was a lot of things that I could talk about to do with masculinity, to talk about growing up as a young man in the 1970s how our behaviour was tailored towards very traditional notions of masculinity, about being tough, about holding in all your emotions. And if you had any issues, you had to just deal with it. You weren't allowed to cry, you were not allowed to show any sign of weakness, because otherwise you were liable to be picked on or bullied. And, you know, we've come a long way, but there's still a long way to go. And I realised that the footy players in these cards, they were the hard men that we were aspiring to. They were our, our heroes. And they were the epitome of the traditional notion of masculinity that we were supposed to sort of perform in a way. So when people come to the exhibition, I'd like them to have a, a good time and to enjoy themselves looking at the pictures. Having the, the original footy card there beside 
The print of me is, uh, is great and it's a lot of fun. So it's a very accessible exhibition for people who aren't even into football. But at the same time, you know, I want them to think about, you know, the difficulties of trying to live up to idealised notions of Australianness, if you will. And also to, to think about there's plenty of ways to be a man, you know, you don't have to, to prescribe to those very traditional roles. Because we found out now that trying to live up to traditional notions of masculinity is really unhealthy. There's, there's a higher rate of suicide um, and depression amongst young men because they try to you know, subscribe to those particular traits. I mean, thinking back on my childhood years at boarding school, I remember some kids which were obviously quite effeminate, you know, they were, they were gay boys, and they really copped a hard time at school because they were different, because they didn't live up to traditional notions of what you were supposed to be as a bloke and they copped it really bad and it's, it, it's sad and I think about those boys even now and the hard time that they received and I wonder you know how they coped with that and how they're doing now. Masculinity I think has changed in culture over the years obviously in the 1970s it was very specific you know to be a man you had to be tough you had to show no emotion, there was a sort of stoicism. I think now where gender is really becoming more and more fluid, everything's kind of up for grabs now and there's so many different ways of being a man. If you're in trouble, if you've got issues that you need to deal with, don't be afraid to open up and talk things through because I think that's very important. I was in a pub in Three Springs and met a guy just over a beer and he just told me, look, you would have found me out on the outskirts of town just shouting out into the trees because he suffered from really severe depression. And he said, the one thing I know is you have to talk about this stuff. If you're having trouble, you need to talk about it. I've got a young son and I know that you know, despite everything that we've learned about masculinity, he still bottles up everything inside, you know, and he's still reluctant to talk about stuff. Even still, even though we know it's healthier, it's still hard for young men to come out and verbalise if they're having difficulties. If I came back to speak to young Graham, what would I say to him? Don't try to conform all the time to what other people are doing. Try to be your own man as much as you can and try to help others when you see them in need. Sometimes I feel like I could have stepped in and helped people when I didn't. I mean, that's a tough thing to do, but you know, I'd try to encourage myself to do that. I think in terms of teaching kids how to be healthy men, I think you can lead by example. If you're empathetic to compassionate, to, to other people, generous to other people. You know, with my own friends, you know, the rapport that we have to each other, we have some banter, but it's always well-meaning and we're always inclusive of each other and other groups. So I think, you know, leading by example is probably the best way. I just got back from uh, a trip to Exmouth with 10 other friends of mine. We were saying how, how good it is to have this camaraderie, this group of mates that can get together and just about talk about anything. It's a really diverse group. I think that when you've got a really healthy base of mates like that, and we're, we're there to support each other if there's any issues, I'm very lucky in that way. Footy in the community is its a great building block to friendships within the community. It brings the whole community together, not just people that play footy, but surrounding businesses as well. And people rally around the footy game and it really does help build community. I'm a diehard Dockers fan and through going to the football and meeting a bunch of people, now we go to Melbourne on a footy trip every year. Football is the thing, the key that brought us all together. When playing the man showed earlier, I was watching people and this one woman, she started looking around the show. She says, I don't get it. It's just a whole pile of football cards blown up on the wall. I mean, what's going on here? And then somebody says, they're all him. And she looked at me, looked across at me and she went, oh! and it was this kind of aha moment when she, she realized, oh my God, it's all him. And then she came up to me and she didn't even know anything about football and she thought it was absolutely wonderful. So I think that the, the show does transcend, well, sporting people love it, footy people love it, but non-footy people love it as well. The show's being toured regionally by Art on the Move. It's going on 
to Geraldton and Katanning and Bunbury. But I hope that they, they get a lot of joy out of the images themselves. And I also hope that it just generates broader discussions about masculinity in general, about what it means for people of cultural difference to arrive in Australia and the difficulties that has. And also perhaps promotes discussion about youth and uh, masculinity and how things can improve in Australia. Thank you.